What's up guys, it's DDP back with another Mavericks post game show, only this time because we don't have any live basketball right now, I've decided to go back to happier times. Times when we not only had basketball, but winning basketball. Postseason winning basketball because at this point, I don't even know if we're going to have playoffs this year for the Mavericks or the rest of the league. We won't get to see potentially Luka and Kristaps Porzingis play together this year in the postseason because there might not be a postseason. So with that in mind, I decided to go back, kind of follow in the footsteps of Fox Sports 1 and, or excuse me, Fox Sports Southwest and go back to the 2011 season and examine the Mavericks championship run. Now, I'm already behind the curve on what they've been doing. I understand that. But I'm going to work in a balance here between me talking post game and actual clips as well to the degree that I can. And we're going to see if we can't make this just a little bit extra special. So with that in mind, we start first with game one in Dallas, Texas the 57 win three seed Dallas Mavericks hosting the 48 win six seeded Portland Trail Blazers. Now this is not Damian Lillard. Damian Lillard is not here yet. We are LaMarcus Aldridge moving into the Batman role for the Blazers and Brandon Roy still there, but kind of reduced coming off the bench into a more Robin role. You see flashes of the old Brandon Roy in there, but he is not the multi-time all-star he once was. So with this, let's dive right in. Now throughout this broadcast, the broadcast team makes a very, very concerted effort to remind you of the Mavericks' recent years of struggle and heartache. Three of the previous four years, the Mavericks had not escaped the first round. The one year they did, they got bounced handily in the second round by the Denver Nuggets. It wasn't good, we get that. We hear the parallels drawn because a lot of teams or rather a lot of experts did predict Portland to actually win this series because the Mavericks did not have respect during this time. Since they blew the 2-0 lead in the 06 finals, they kind of were not a laughing stock by any means, but they weren't taken seriously because they won 67 games the next year, Dirk gets his MVP, and then unfortunately they become the first number one seed to lose a seven game series in NBA history two and eight seeded opponent. This obviously way undercut the Mavericks. They then come out the next year, get bounced in the first round, despite pulling off the Jason Kidd trade, bounced in the first round against Tyson Chandler and a young Chris Paul with New Orleans. Then they beat the Spurs, get thrashed in the second round by the Nuggets, as I already mentioned. And then the next year, 09, they're a two seed and they lose to the seven seeded San Antonio Spurs again in the first round. It's not good. We became, uh, we weren't the first second seed to lose to a seven seed in the playoffs, but we're still in pretty exclusive company there, which is not great. Granted, that Spurs team was so beat up that year, that was not a typical seven seed. And we would see that in this playoff series, or rather this playoff year as well, because the Spurs thankfully saved us from having to be alone in making history, but that's a different topic. So first, because of all of that, the Blazers were the sexy pick to beat the Mavericks in this series. And yeah, you know, this team was two and nine in games without Dirk that year. They won 57 games. So even if you're splitting, you know, 50-50 on that with Dirk, you're a 60 plus win team. This was a great Mavericks team. Got off to the best, I think it was 25 game start in franchise history, something like 22 and three. I mean, phenomenal how this team executed, but again, they were the three seed and they were faltering late. The defending, two-time defending champions, three-time reigning Western Conference champion, Los Angeles Lakers were the two seed, the Spurs were the one seed, and Dallas, because of way of tiebreaker, ended up as the three seed in this playoffs. And as a result of that, they drew a pretty tough draw. Portland is a good team. They were a tougher first round matchup for sure, but Dallas felt like they matched up well. So as we can see here, the game got off to a little bit of a slow start for the Mavericks. Dirk and eh, nothing, nothing great going early. And you'll see that throughout this game. This was a dreadful game for Dirk Nowitzki 
until the final six and a half minutes. But you gotta go through the heartache before you can enjoy these spoils. So that's what we'll go through here, what, what we will endure, if you will. Now, at this point, you have a 38-year-old Jason Kidd at the helm for the Mavericks. He is averaging a career low eight points per game this season. But while the better, sexier aspects of his game have kind of left him, he doesn't have the quickness. He still has the vision, but he doesn't have any quickness or explosion. He has rounded into a respectable three-point shooter, shooting over 34% from beyond the arc this season, and that comes very much in handy in this game. But he's kind of just a steady hand, a calming force, and because at six foot four he actually has surprising strength and defensive capabilities, he's actually able to achieve a lot for the Mavericks in this run, and this is a vital part of the team as it moves forward. Having that calming, steady hand that was so painfully absent in 2006, and even the last couple years with Kidd there, it was a big piece, but it wasn't everything. It's kind of like it was the polishing touch, having that kind of point guard and that kind of floor general presence mixed with a defensive-minded, rim-protecting, rebounding center in Tyson Chandler is what really brought this team all together. Now this game is a tale of two halves, as in the first half, the Dallas Mavericks shoot 47% from the field, only to pretty much crater in the second half, shooting I think 24% in the third quarter, and it, it gets worse. They had 14 points in the third quarter. Their lead went from up 10 to down six, just very back and forth. And Dirk cannot buy a bucket. At one point in this game, Dirk is 4 of 15 from the field. Before he gets cooking finally in the fourth quarter, midway through the fourth quarter, he's shooting a frigid 5 of 17. Now what Portland did really well in this game against Dirk is they mixed up the looks he was getting. They didn't keep throwing the same guy at him. You'd see Gerald Wallace sometimes. You'd see LaMarcus Aldridge. You'd see Marcus Camby. I mean, you'd see variety in how they guarded him. And they were physical with him. They were really challenging that notion that Dirk was still dragging along with him at that stage in his career, that he was soft. And you see it getting under his skin. You see Dirk getting visibly frustrated, never getting teed up, but visibly frustrated, quitting on plays because he's pissed off he didn't get the foul call on the other end. And it just is cratering for the team. Dirk's committing turnovers. He's getting roughed up. They're not getting the calls. And it kind of just leads into a situation where Portland, despite having their own issues, is in really good position. Now, when I say Portland had their own issues, LaMarcus well, Aldridge had 13 points in the first quarter. And for some reason, they only gave him like two shots then in the second quarter, he gets like two points, I think in that case. So I don't know what Portland's trying to do here, but after one quarter, Portland has a 22-21 lead. Jason Kidd's leaving the Mavericks, uh, leading the Mavericks with eight points. Aldridge actually has 11 here, not 13. He has 13, I believe, at the half. But it's just a very not good start for the Mavericks in this game because it kind of echoes a lot of the the struggles and the turmoil that the team had gone through at this point in the several years since the 2006 finals collapse. Now, as the adversity continues to build in this game, one thing that's important to note is that Dallas, despite being the three seed in the West, was not a, they were good at home, but not great. And the reason I say that is because they were 29 and 12 at home, which among the Western Conference playoff teams, was the second worst record of playoff teams. However, they were tied for the league best road record in, in uh, that with the Miami Heat. So that's very advantageous for Dallas in this postseason as well. And while we say, hey, second worst home playoff record in the Western Conference in this, you know, 29 and 12, it's not that bad. It sounds worse than it is, but as the adversity continues to build and you start hearing the, the AAC get a little tense, a little quiet. Dirk can't buy a bucket. He's starting to get you know manhandled enough to the point where his fallaway shots are airballing. He's frustrated. The Mavericks have an 11 minute stretch in the game in the second half where they don't have a field goal. The only points they're getting are at the line. And it just feels like the, 
the entire air is going out of the balloon. And rather than buckle, they do basically rally to the cause. And this is spearheaded a lot by Dirk. Now in that hardship, you have a moment where Portland is outscoring Dallas in the second half in the paint, 22 to zip. They are not, they're not blowing the game open by any means. Their biggest lead was six, but Dallas cannot get out of this hole. They can't buy a bucket. Like I said earlier, their drought goes on for about 11 minutes before it's finally snapped by a Jason Kidd three. I mentioned earlier as well that Jason Kidd's three point percentage played a, it was a big part of the later stages of his career, but it plays a particularly big part in this game because Jason Kidd splashes six three pointers in the, in the first game of this series. And it completely transforms things for Dallas. First of all, it keeps him afloat for a good portion of the game early on. Second of all, it changes the way Portland is playing them. It's making them not leave Jason Kidd wide open because if you let him step into a three, he was knocking it down. He wasn't forcing issues or as Doris Burke keeps calling out during the broadcast, he wasn't really hunting for his own shot until he really realized how much he was cooking in the third, late third and moments in the fourth quarter as well. But him snapping that drought for Dallas was crucial because it allowed them to get back into the mix. Now, they did this initially at the free throw line. Dirk didn't shoot his first free throw of the game until the fourth quarter, which is insane. And as he started to find a rhythm, just at the foul line, he starts getting some of his jumpers to go. He starts getting and one, stepping through a defense on a pull-up jumper. And he just gets cooking and cooking and cooking. And before you know it, Dirk, who had been having an abysmal game, five of 17 from the field, five turnovers, suddenly he's got 16 points, 18 points in the fourth quarter. And Dallas has not only rallied back and taken the lead, they're now stretching to a six point, eight point, whatever lead. And Portland is the one who can't answer. Now, Nicholas Batoon makes a couple plays for them, but there's just not a whole lot they can do here. For Portland, they have a young Wesley Matthews, but he's not a big factor in this game. And Portland, for, the, for that year, averaged the fewest possessions per, per game in the league. And that's why for Dallas, a big part of it was even though they have a 38-year point guard, playing with pace and tempo and rhythm was so key. Keeping the ball moving and floor spacing was invaluable to Dallas. And it started to pick things up for them. So Dirk ends this game with 26 points, 10 boards, 16 points in the fourth quarter alone. Jay Kidd, young man, took off about a week towards the end of the regular season in, ter in terms of not a week's worth of games or whatever, but he takes off time towards the end of the regular season just for a quick little breather before that run. And he comes out fresh as a daisy, 24 points for Jay Kidd. Something like six of eight on threes or six of nine on threes in the game. Just fantastic by Dallas here. They get an 89-81 victory in this opener. And this was huge because even though this series would get very much in doubt later on, I felt like this was the first good challenge that they rose up to meet. Because with Dirk shooting the way he was, everything could have fallen apart like that. And instead, they held tight, they fought through the adversity. Yeah, quality minutes off the bench. Peja Stojakovic has a couple threes, Jet gets going. This season, Jet was leading the league in uh, scoring off the bench at like 15.4 a game. The Mavericks had the highest scoring bench in the league. And it's because you got players like Peja Stojakovic who only played about 33 games for the Mavericks that year and was on his third team that season. Started with New Orleans, got traded to Toronto, got hurt, got waived, signed with Dallas, 33 games, and then poof, there he is in the postseason. And it was co contributions from guys like that that really made this team special. And you see, even in this first game, a spark plug that J.J. Barea can be. Because even though he has a rough day, he's one of seven from the field, four points, his contribution is that he's breaking down the defense at will. He's getting into the teeth of the defense and kicking out for wide open looks. He's creating those looks for Peja, for Dirk, for other guys like that. And that is invaluable to this team. So 
you see it early on. You see glimpses, even in a game that was a little rough to watch for three and a half quarters, you see how good this team can be. And it tells you that, hey, as good as they looked in the regular season, years past that might have faded by the time they got to the postseason as, as teams you know, knuckled down and really got physical with them. But here you get your first little indication that maybe just maybe this is a little bit different in terms of the fight this team is going to show. That mental fortitude and toughness that had so been lacking in years past, maybe it's finally here. Goosebumps for me, man. Goosebumps. This is going to wrap up the first video of this. This is game one. I'm going to crank these out every couple days. We're going to go next to game two. Obviously, we're doing the entire thing. Not even just Maverick victories. We are doing the entire 2011 playoff run here because we deserve some form of post-game playoff basketball, damn it. So we're going to do that. But that's my time for this video, guys. If you like it, don't forget to leave a like, drop a comment below, subscribe to the Dallas Prospect, buy the merchandise on represent.com. And until next time, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Peace.